When you take the deal, you provide your family with 20 years of food. Do you want it? Mom, don't. A home of your own. And knowing that you didn't take more than your fair share. The deal is a gift. Take it. There's an order to things if you want to survive. Everything past those walls has been bombed or poisoned, died in the heat. What's in here isn't great, but at least it won't kill you. Thank you for all your work and congratulations on your processing. I'll take the deal. You took it. You're not taking it. The deal is a gift. The deal is a curse. Everything will be fine. I have a ticket clock inside of me. They put it there. I just need a little more time. Maybe we can find a way. She's my daughter. I can't go if I don't know she's safe. I'm going to a place beyond the reach of the Bureau. He's our way to get out of this place. I can't promise to get you in, but I can get you there. We'll risk it. We have to die for 20 years of food rations and they're living like this. We all need an escape plan. Be careful out there. You have five days left. If there is a chance that I can save my mother, you have to tell me. Fear makes you act not like yourself. You have to take the deal. Are you ready to die? Yo, 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 what's going on? This is the NRW, we're nerds. Rule the world, it's your boy, Kuya P, a.k.a. the Babinka boy. The leader of the holla holla homies in the Senna gang gang of the show, pal show. I think I'm missing one there. It's been a day, y'all. But I love y'all. Another episode. My love to the amazing Ates who are doing all the things right now. Traveling, teaching in Japan still. Shout out to Kat. And uh, yeah, Tina's been traveling right now. So my love to Tina. Um, but I have a special guest on. I've been trying to get her on for the longest time, but I've never given up because she is too amazing, <laughs> too awesome, um, just in so many ways. You've played with a, a virtual version on a video game with her. Uh, you've seen her in a lot of films and seen symbols uh, uh, of her. Shout out to the lost symbol um, of Ngoza Tsushima. Uh, she is amazing, but she's she we brokered a deal, if you will, <laughs> to, to get her on here finally. Um, all my love to her. Just just an amazing talent who has just is contributing with other works outside of it. Riotsville, USA. Um, oh my God, I'm forget I'm losing it on another project she got. But now she also has the deal. Uh, she has this amazing company called Linlay Productions. I just love her all. Uh, in every way. I'm going to bring her on. I'm going to stop talking because I'm going to blabber. Sumali Montano, y'all! Thank you so thank much. You time today. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you. I'm so glad we could finally do this. Yes. <laughs> you are the best. So, uh, yeah, right before we got started, y'all, um, I was talking to Somali. You know, I got a chance to finally check out the deal this uh, morning of this recording. And y'all know I'm an empath. I cry. I'm a father. And uh, that, you know, becoming a father really is what I think changed me and made me more of an empath and more knowledgeable of what's going on. And uh, the amazing Somali, you know, took those ideas and came up with this film and got a great team together to help her do it. And uh, it's so Filipino in every way because of that. I think the DNA of did you, it. Because did you did you, we are did you get the ending? Did you did you were you surprised by the ending? I was I wasn't sure where you're gonna go with it. And then I was like I, I was one of you know I don't want to spoil I don't want to spoil yeah, yeah, we'll no, no, that I don't later because <laughs> everybody you need to check it out available on Roku right now. Head over to Roku once you're done watching this. Please uh, check it out, support her, and let us know in the comments and let Sumali know um, how you feel about it. Um, yeah, it's it's a it, it hit me in the feels, you know. Again, like I said, I'm an empath, and and that's what we are as a people, as Filipinos. We are very caring, and we will go all out for our children. And uh, I know that is what 
uh, your amazing mother did for you and what inspired you to do this. And uh, all my love to you and your mother. Um, rest you. in power to her. And uh, yeah, Sumali, this is this is uh, just wonderful to finally get together and just talk about a project uh, that I know is near and dear to you. And uh, so let's kick this off, Somali. Let's talk about how this happened. And and as I started, you know, this kind of was based off of your experiences with your mom uh, growing up. Uh, let's talk. Um, I think I was inspired to to make the film really to um, to honor my mom. This is my love song to her. Um, I did not know until after she died. I mean, I knew how much she sacrificed for me, but I didn't know, no, until after she died. And it, it kind of links back into what you were saying. Um, I was a young mom when she passed away. I my, my, my baby was only a year old. And so as I continued in my journey as a mother, I started to understand more. And then there were specific things that I won't, I won't get into now, but there were specific things that I found out that I was like, oh, she did that for me. And I, it just, it just blew my mind so much. And I, I didn't know what to do with it. And so this was, this was part of my grieving process. This was part of my finding some more closure, but, you know, on the other side of things too, it's just, I love sci-fi. I like, I like the dystopian world and I wanted to, I wanted to see us centered. I wanted to see women of color centered in a, in a genre where we're not, usually not not centered and not represented in such dynamic ways completely agree yeah uh, that and that's why i really enjoyed this and loved seeing somebody that i know and has those real feelings about the world and so uh it was wonderful to see you in this and uh yeah and to know that the story behind it comes from a true place uh because yeah. you know you can feel that and it resonates. And uh, that's that's what really this film was for me. The deal was, Patrick, you better bring a box of tissues because you're going to cry, <laughs> you know, get ready. Um, but no, it's it's worth it. And it makes you have those conversations with the people you love and, and the choices you make. And uh, it's, it's very understandable. So uh, you came up with this idea and you reached out. Uh, I believe you had another screenwriter kind of kind of touch it all up. Um, talk to me about, you know, uh, you know, the process. And again, this, yeah, this had to be healing. Uh, and, and like you said, self-reflection therapy uh, to just put this out there onto paper. And what was that like for your collaborators to, you know, I'm sure this with something as deep as this, it all, it resonates. And so for them, you know, working with you to make sure they could get your dream on the screen. Yeah. I, it was, I feel so fortunate because we made the movie we set out to make you know, and sometimes a lot of times that doesn't happen. You know, you can have this great idea. And then, you know, I I had this great idea. Uh, I was able to hire a writer because I, I couldn't write the screenplay. If I wrote the screenplay, we wouldn't even be here today. Yeah. Like I'd be still trying to write it. Um, but my um, my writer was a friend who actually knew my mom and had actually met her from freshman year of college when we had met. And so that was one connection that he could feel into that. And then once we finished the script, um, I had no doubt in my mind who I wanted to bring it to first. And it was Electric Entertainment and Dean Devlin and his wife, Lisa Brenner. Lisa was actually our big champion there. Um, I, I, I gave the script to her first. She connected with it. She connected with it as a woman, you know, and understanding like what, what this what this world and what their story says about women and what happens is women get older too. And um, she brought it to Dean. And I think because Dean is also Filipina, Filipino and he has a Filipino mom like me, it allowed him to bring something. It allowed him to bring, I think, a care to this, to the work that I, other people may not have been able to. So mm. it was it was really a, a blessed journey through the whole thing. Like I, I could, I could feel my mama like working from above. Like that's, that's kind of how, how I felt, you know. Um, I, I couldn't believe. It. And the the where we got to shoot the film, the locations that we got. I, that's my one of my my backdrop right now is one of our locations, which just everything blew my mind. The crew was amazing. The like the whole process was just. Are we really? Is this for real? Are we really doing this? And could it be? We actually, I don't, I don't know if you knew this. We actually finished filming in December 
of 2019. Oh. So we came up with the whole con- conceit, the everything, writing, you know, development, writing the script, filming, doing the, we did our final reshoot in December 2019, right before the world changed. Wow. And so literally, even that was like, holy crap, if we hadn't gotten that done, I yeah. don't know. You know, this would this is this is a different film to say at, at the very least. Oh my gosh. Wow. If that's now thinking just I'm thinking timeline. Cause I know yeah. you were working on the, when we try to I think we tried to do this during the symbol, the lost symbol. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, you were amazing in that as well. Uh, just yeah, I think wow. Cause I, I kind of was thinking this was a result of the pandemic, but no, this happened prior to and wow. No, and you know what our our kind of morbid joke was while we were going through post-production we're like dang we got to get this out before it becomes a documentary because Mm. the level you know the the world that the deal is in you know is that it's such a cruel and callous world and it's one where compassion is is essentially a crime and Mm. and i think people would argue some people would argue we're we're kind of kind of there in some in some respects now yeah. how people kind of have normalized the the death that we um that we've gone mm. through yeah oh uh you know what let, let me get on positive stuff right now the i thought the, the background was like cgi for a second and but that was an actual location oh yeah. my god oh, oh my gosh i actually i'll i'll, I'll share this with you because i when we when I, we created the 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 script and everything we brought it out in my mind i was kind of hoping we were going to film this in the philippines because i was like okay that's where i have like my connections that's where i have people who can help me um but when we brought it to dean he was actually um filming a tv show in serbia and so he said well let's throw the script over to my line producer in serbia and see see what they say when they came back with the location photos of where we could film this i was like wow oh i am um, like, yeah, this is a real place. We're probably, I'd say like 80% like practical locations. Like we were all, we were a location show. There were maybe just the, just the uh, stuff in the apartment buildings yeah. uh, was shot on, uh, on a studio set. Wow. Okay. I'm, I'm sure if on production, call, the, the filmmaker and me is like, that saved probably a lot of money to work in Serbia in for production value. Right. That's, that was, that's... <laughs> that was, that was helpful, but I think really that aside um th- the locations speak for themselves like it literally mm. was like yeah. i i could not have dreamed better locations in my mind it literally ended up you know because of the collaboration with electric entertainment um and, and our great production uh company in serbia too like because of that collaboration this ended up being better on screen than in my mind's eye oh wow i love that love that for you Snaps on that. Um, okay, so we get the script together. We get uh, Dean and the amazing team over at Electric Entertainment behind us. Uh, but we got to cast this film. And you have uh, an amazing actress that plays your daughter and some of the other characters. Uh, let's talk about uh, your accompanying cast. Yeah, sure. Um, I still, to this day, look at Emma, who plays Annalyn, my daughter. And I'm like, it's so wacky. We 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 really look like mother daughter i think that's the magic of casting um we we worked with laura windows who cast it out of london and um that's where we found most of our supporting cast um yeah every all the main all the main characters uh lisa brenner though who's one of our producers she also plays a role in the movie and she and i obviously came from um los angeles from the states but everyone else uh in the main cast was from london and then we worked really hard we had a great uh, local crew, casting crew, um, making sure that we had a colorful, we had a colorful world. So that, cause I, I was like, I am not going to be the only person of color that survives the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> so we had people coming in there. There was, I think, a, uh, at least a small percentage of international students that are studying in Serbia, but we, we were busing people in from multiple countries around Serbia to, to fill out the world, which was, which was really, really important for me. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So uh, we're filming in Serbia. Uh, was this your first time visiting there or had you visited there before uh, for other shoots? I never, <laughs> I never shot anything in Eastern Europe. And I was like, it was a, it was wild. It was yeah. wild to me. I, I, I cannot speak more highly of the crew and the professionalism and the 
the craft that everybody you know has there i was i was just blown away and the food actually <laughs> the food was actually more pinoy than you might think like in, but instead of rice it was potatoes but man it was like meat and potatoes and oh, wow. like, it felt and saucy meat so it, like it really felt they, to me i was like oh I, I i get into this food this is this is like my culture <laughs> that's awesome because sometimes you never know on location what it's going to be like will it fit into like my uh my my if you have like a specific diet or whatever um that's yeah. awesome no. so it, how I, I do want to say though that the cast really was amazing i i i, I kind of got off i got myself off on a tangent but there, it was really amazing and i think for emma and i this was the first film that we both got to lead co-lead you know and so mm. it was for us it was really you know i, I know we both brought our a game to it and I think in the process of doing that, uh, I like to think it really led to some great chemistry on screen. Nice, nice. Yeah. Yes, yes, indeed. Um, so you're filming, you're working all together. You have this great cast. You're in Serbia, maybe the first time for some, maybe not. Um, how long was that shoot like? And can we talk about like any like set memories or just anything with the production that um, really stand out for you? Yeah, um, we... I want to say we had at least, I want to say around at least a month uh, pre-production. Of course, the the on the ground team was working for longer than that, but um, the LA, the LA or the stateside team went over a month before. We shot for six weeks. We had a thirty day, thirty one day shoot, um, and it was it was a dream come true. Um, special memories, I think. You know, it it really comes back to our locations because you can, you know, I think you see it in the production value of the film. Um, oh yeah, how great it is and how, uh, I I mean that's that's one of the first things I think of aside from how great the people the people were to work with in Serbia, uh, the locations were everything because not only did we get this like amazing brutalist architecture that serves as our like bleak lived in, but I think poetic looking world you have these you have this whole system of underground tunnels in belgrade which is like blow your it blows your mind i mean the history there that th these tunnels are used by attackers and defenders and throughout i mean just mm. it's steeped in some really deep history and the fact that we got to shoot in some of these places and, and then we had like you know there's there's some outdoors some beautiful um outdoor scenes in in the movie too and the fact that that was just right outside belgrade too not far from it it was such a that was such a treat i i i didn't realize i think at the time how spoiled we were of like how what amazing locations and crew we had i mean i knew but like i didn't know no until like you kind of oh. like get back and see it all up there and then compare it to experiences that i've had after filming um and just to know how lucky we were to get that Heck yeah. And this is yours, my friend. This was yours, a Linlay production. There we yeah. go. Yeah. So did you get to do like traveling at all uh, while you're there to visit? Like, uh, you know, while on set? Did you, no time I at did, all. Just it was all I set did time. not. I actually just had a friend reach out saying like, hey, I know you shot in Serbia. Where should I go? And I think of the 31 days of filming. I was filming for 30 of those 31 mm -hmm. days. So I didn't really get a chance. I know several of our crew uh got a chance to visit um countries outside of serbia too but i didn't really get a chance to <laughs> that so. happens when you're the the act the one of the lead actors and the producer you know <laughs> you've got to make sure all these things are going down so i understand um well but, i will i will fine. say i will say since this was my first time acting um and producing uh you know i had very smart like you know dean is dean is a veteran producer and um you know lisa lisa brenner too uh both of them were like, okay, when you're acting, when we're there filming, you have to take off your producer hat. <laughs> and I, I, I knew, I, of course, in my heart, I'm like, I want to be able to do it all. But I knew that that wasn't going to be the smart move. And um, yeah. luckily, I could easily trust um, the vision, the vision for the movie to Dean and to our director or she because they, they had it. And so I could really just focus on performing.
That's wonderful. It's great to have a good team and that will be upfront and real with you because, yeah. yeah, we totally. all at the end of the day want the best product. Totally. You know, in, uh, speaking of that, our director, Orshi, um, she's a Hungarian director. And one of the things that I just fell in love with her about was when we were interviewing uh, directors. She did not throw any punches. She was like, all right, whoever wrote this clearly is American and did not have issues with access the way I did growing up behind the Iron Curtain. And so she, yeah, she grew up behind the Iron Curtain in Hungary. And it was wow. like, so she, when she said that and she had no, she just came out with it, like ro roaring at the beginning. I mean, she clearly loved, she loved what she had, the script, but she, because of her perspective, it added so much that we couldn't bring to it. And I think that's why you know, that's why we that's why we want to champion diversity. You have different perspectives to make something feel more authentic. And and I feel because of how she grew up, she could bring her lived experience into this and combine it with kind of my lived experience with my mom. And it hopefully, you know, we 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 found that nice intersection between a heartfelt kind of small indie drama story between a mother daughter. But we put it in this like awesome sci-fi world that yeah. you know dystopian world that um feels big and more commercial and more accessible uh you succeeded i believe, I oh, believe that. and you. knowing that uh aspect of the director just wow that right is amazing like you, right? you couldn't have asked for more right there exactly it was literally like here i have i've dean devlin who like he the guy knows how to how to how to make a sci-fi movie like yeah. that, that is his expertise and to build the world that he did with with Orshi and the vision that she had. And what I liked, too, is she brought kind of she and her um, and her DP or DP Mate like he they brought a, a different feel to the cinematography mm. that uh, maybe is a little more European, maybe a little, you know, a little more European art house, which. I love because I wanted it. I knew I wanted sci-fi. I knew I wanted dystopian, but I wanted something that was distinct and different to American eyes because the whole conceit of this is that, you know, there are no more countries in the world. Like it's just the survivors and the survivors come from all different places and the survivors have, have, have kind of like found themselves in this world. And so I wanted to have that international feel. Definitely. Oh, yes. Knowing that and all of that. Yeah. With the type of film that this is, that that's the that's the pedigree you want to create. So that sounds amazing. I love that. All right. So, uh, OK. See, I, I told I you I to... talk too much. I talk too much. <laughs> oh, no, no. This You're amazing. Uh, so uh, I, I, I'm trying to figure out how to ask this without spoiling. So okay. uh, the end, as we were saying earlier. I was trying to figure out where you're going to go because it's just all about surviving in this time period and being as a mother doing everything and uh, as a parent, it, it, it doesn't even have to just be that mother daughter relationship. Yep. It could yep. it just as as a parent and a child, you will go all out. I know I would, would do anything and everything for my child. Um, so I was curious, was that I don't want to spoil. So uh, I. I thought there was going to be a certain end point, but then there was a whole surprise to the end point. <laughs> it yeah, wasn't the end yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. So um, was that always in the cards? Um, no, no. And I, I will credit, I will credit my, um, my writer, Sean, for he's not for that. Um, the, the ending in my mind was probably what you thought the first ending was. And, um, and I, I, I so clearly remember we were like brainstorming at a table cafe in los angeles and 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 i was like okay and then this happens and then this and then this is the ending and then there was literally like a pause and then sean goes oh but what if we did this and i was like oh my god yes. <laughs> and so that's you know that's the beauty of of collaboration definitely definitely yeah i was in one way i i think conversations about this type of real world you know this is real world situation you know that we all go through um and, and why i think this is such a great film because it'll start conversations like this yeah uh, good is and, and uh yeah so should there be a, a quote-unquote hollywood ending or or should it be just what that so um 
that's that's where my mind is after watching it today and just enjoying that. I just think at the end of the day for everyone watching this, if you want a good sci-fi film, you want a good parental film that has such complexities and that we can relate to. And as a Filipino, something that we are all about is family and kumbayan and just taking care of each other. You can relate with this. And uh, I'm so glad. That's how I'm I felt so, about it. so glad you feel that because... Um... I mean, I mean, that's it means so much to me that you feel you feel that Filipino connection and that it it's it really it really does come everything about my mom and my relationship, everything about how the way we the complicated ways that we loved each other, the way that we fought, the way that I got mad at her. It's all on screen like that. You know, when she was um when I was in high school, she was diagnosed with breast cancer and I did not have the emotional maturity to deal with it. And. Uh, the day that she was supposed to go into the hospital to get uh, a mastectomy, I literally was like, this is my, this is my support, my soul support system. I could not fathom what might happen to her. And so I, I refused to go to the hospital. I'm not proud of that now, but I refused to go. And I, I just couldn't deal. And, and you see, and I left and you see that literally in the film and it's, it's in the opening. So I'm not spoiling anything, but you know, you see Annalyn get mad at her mom for for having to die. And she yells at her and storms, storms out of the apartment and goes and parties with her friends. Mm. And like you that's totally taken from real life and all of the ways that Tala is trying to um teach her daughter how to survive and like she likes you know where she where she squirrels away the money wh- you know what 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 to sell this for and but yep. you know and, and where to find you know where to where to be able to you know do your side gig to get extra money to survive and you know sell this and then do that mm. all of that all of that came from my mom and my conversations i mean that she was, was my mom i was like really you do that was my the, everything that's why yeah. it, to me it's so filipino and just I'm there's so like glad. these little int- intricacies that i could completely relate to and have seen my other fellow Filipino family yeah. and friends and, you know, they've and their experiences like, yeah, I, I knew that. And I know I'm doing that. I think it's just in the DNA, to be honest, <laughs> like it's in us. Me and, too. I'm totally yeah. I'm catching myself doing that with my son. And I'm like, because I, and I remember being on the flip side going, mom, do we have to have these discussions? Like, I already know where to go and which teacher to go to for this and which yeah. teacher to go to for that. Like, I get it. I know Do we have it's, you know, but. I can't help myself now. It's like, this is our way of, it's one of the ways that we show our love. Ex- you said it right there. You hit the nail on the coffin right there. Completely. Uh, that is us. And it's us. And they'll understand when they get like, like we did, like we didn't understand. They'll understand as they get older. And uh, yeah. All right. So w- that's a good bridge. So when you wrapped on this wraps production post, um, screening it to, uh, before you screened it to everybody else or what, what has been the reception from family, friends, um, and as well, you know, the greater audience as well available again, everybody on Roku. Let me not forget that. Ro- go to Roku right now after you're done right. watching the cinema. You don't even need a Roku. You don't even need a Roku device. You can just, uh, in the States and North, in North America, you, I, I think, and in the UK too, you just have to, uh, sign up for an account and then you can stream it for free. There you go. So yeah, what was it like uh, once you were out to post uh, with your collaborators? That did you, you did you get everything you wanted, and, and what yeah. conversations sparked from there? Because this to me is a, a what the power of cinema. Why we do cinema is to spark conversation. This is one of those films that does that. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I think, well, so my mind goes in so many different places, but. Um, I feel like there was a moment when we were in post and, uh, you know, we, we were tweaking things here and there. Um, we, we knew we had something and we were just in the final kind of stages. And I had never done this before. So I never, the first time producing. So I didn't know, um, that people, you know, people refer to it as finding your film. And we, we've, we got to an edit and it was just the most minute things like, okay, we're going to snip that scene there. And we're going to tuck that thing in there. And we're going to add this little thing in there. And I just remember we all, we all knew we found the film. We found the film. And, and I didn't know that not all, that doesn't always happen. So um, I was so grateful for that. And 
I think the best parts, honestly, when now that it's out and people can see it, the like your reaction is everything to me. And that and so many people have come to me with that kind of feeling of um kind of keying into that human relationship and what it means with, you know, whether it's parent and child or someone that you've been taking care of who's who's sick or who's dying. And it's like there's there's a there's a human need for us to care for each other and be compassionate toward each other that will succeed, you know, will break through all obstacles. And I feel like that's that comes through. And when people get the film in terms of, yeah, we've never seen a Filipino woman like, you know, in this and, you know, and she's the center of this and other women of color who are main, you know, in, centered characters that have a big impact on the story. Um, I get I get really I get really inspired by that. And oh, I, I, one other thing I'll say is um, a couple because co- I've been doing a few interviews and a lot of times people will say, you know, I wasn't really a sci fi fan, but I watched it and the story got me, you know, and then or the other thing I'll hear is um, I was I, I was I am a sci fi fan. Like I came for the world building, the Dean Devlin world building sci fi and I stayed for the story. Mm. like that that's everything for me because it's so to me it's this is what we wanted we wanted something that no matter what you're looking in looking for you know and then literally when when one person that interviewed me was like i really was worried that it wasn't gonna like this at all because i i don't like sci-fi but i loved it and he was and he too like you was drawn in by by the relationship of these two characters and he was like that really I, I wasn't expecting it. And so that to me is like the cool thing. Like no matter where you're coming at this from, there's something in it for you. Completely agree. Yeah. I, I, it's a sci-fi film setup. To me, it's it's a new genre on its own. It, it has sci-fi characteristics, but it's truly a drama piece as well. It's a, to me, a parental yeah. film, you know, there's so many layers to this that it, just one of those will, will can connect with somebody. And yeah, we were we were really go. trying to we were really trying to hit uh in a, what do you call that in the Venn diagram the uh, <laughs> yeah, the yeah intersection we were mm-hmm. really trying to hit an intersection that um I feel like we did between that kind of intimate intimate drama and big sci fi world and you just you don't normally see that um, for a dystopian you know, for a dystopian sci-fi film. And I, I don't know if you caught this too. I'm curious. Um, I really like the way our characters use humor. You know, it's not this oh, like, yeah. thing, like, right. Right. Because yeah. it, it, it like, it's, you can't survive <laughs> in this world without having that perspective and having some shift in perspective that makes you, that makes you laugh or that is that you, you know, that is humorous because, and you see that in our characters. I find, I, I found that really refreshing. I think it made our characters, especially like my daughter and her boyfriend, it makes them more relatable. It makes them more charming. And you see how people actually can mentally get by in this cruel world. And, you know, with their little one-liners here and there, I love that. I think that's the thing. And I got to just say that that's also Filipino without right? the outwardly Filipino. Like to me, a lot of these Filipino elements that is in this film is, I hate to say this. Uh, I haven't publicly said this out there to the people um, uh, in on show, pal show yet, but I guess this will be a little bit of it. Um, Easter Sunday, our biggest Filipino film this yep. year. Um, shout out to Joe Coy. I love him, but the film wasn't all that great. Cause to me, it had to remind us certain Filipino isms like every five minutes and then just have just, I don't know. Uh, uh, and I'm not saying that you feel this way, Somali, uh, the, just, this is what my feelings on it, that it was like, uh, just a, a caricature, a Filipino caricature, if you will. And I, I didn't like that too much. This film has Filipino representation throughout and wholeheartedly without putting that character, that layer of caricature. And, and that's what I appreciate. And I think that's where we as Filipinos and Filipino Americans that are in this industry, like myself, that are creating Filipino products, not only for Filipinos, but for a wide audience can reach out to everyone. And then in turn, they'll learn our culture. So yeah. that is what I appreciate about this film. Thank you. Y- you get you it. Just being in this and leading this 
is amazing and inspiring, Somali. Thank you. Um, you um, you get it. That's that's exactly what we want. And to and the one thing I will say is like we need it all. Like we need the whole the whole spectrum of representation. Very but true. For what for what I wanted to do with this, you're right. It's this is why your your feedback, how you reacted, means so much to me because I feel like it is so Filipina. Like it's so Filipino. It's it's it is my mom. And like you can't. How do you? get any more Filipino than that. It's like, she's a Filipino mom. Uh, but it's done in a way that's not, um, it's not, uh, the movie isn't about necessarily her. Um, I don't know how to, I don't, I don't know how to say this either. It's a, uh, it centers us in a way that is very true and authentic, but is some way that is also universal and people can, because any parent, any, any child can relate to this relationship of a parent and child and any parent can definitely relate relate to the determination and the desperation that that a mother feels or parent feels to save their child or to help their child so it it kind of bridges that gap or bridges bridges cultures because once once you once you center us you create more empathy for for us right and then you give you give the audiences permission to advocate for us, you know, in the real world. And so that's well done. There you go. No, <laughs> I, love like, it. I, I can feel myself going on, but I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll just stop, stop, stop. <laughs> I have to find myself too. And again, I love Easter Sunday in certain ways and for its representation. I don't mean to bad mouth Easter Sunday. Um, again, a lot of the people involved with that are good friends of mine. Um, it's just, uh, I've been having these conversations with other Filipino American filmmakers, creators, and uh, the success or non-success of Easter Sunday, and how do we keep this momentum going of our projects? And uh, yeah, I think this is a great way to represent that. And so thank you, Sumali, for giving us the deal. Um, but this isn't the only project you have. So again, everybody, I want y'all to go over to Roku, check it out, uh, watch the film, and let us know in the comments and let Sumali know uh, as well, how you feel about it. Let's support her. But she has a bunch of other projects that as a father of an amazing female and having been around uh, such amazing uh, women in my life, um, I know that is also a prime focus for you as well with your company and, and giving us these voices because we've had some, we've had a bad administration here and there that has depowered your voices. And so I, I need uh, and I want to hear you all speak and be loud and uh, I love that as a fact of what you're doing as well. Can we talk about other Linlay productions? Yeah, uh, sure. Riotsville USA is coming to mind. And I can't remember, I think it was The Passing uh, as uh, well, another project we did, we, that you helped support. Were, yeah, we were supporters of Passing. Oh, but before I say that, I just I just want to say thank you to you two for all of the work that you do to highlight and to amplify our voices. Like you do so much and you do it with such enthusiasm and such joy that it is, um, it's felt. We, 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 we all appreciate you so much, Guya B. So thank you. Um, uh, other, other projects. Yeah. <laughs> Passing, Ridesville and others yes, along Nanny, the way. Nanny, Nanny is the Let's one you're Let's show thinking. some love. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Nanny. Um, yeah. So we have, uh, we have the deal out now on the Roku channel. We also have Riotsville USA, um, which is a, it's a documentary that looks at the history of the militarization of the police in this country, and it will blow your mind. I have not had a single person, friend, who, who's gone to see this that hasn't been completely blown away by what they've learned. And the documentary is done in a totally different style that you've never seen before. It's all archival footage. The team is just brilliant. Our director, Sierra Pettengill, is amazing. And uh, it was acquired by Magnolia Pictures. It's in theaters now. Um, and uh, it's 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 very near and dear to my heart. Um, and we have another movie that's been announced called Nanny. And uh, Riotsville and Nanny both premiered at the Sundance Film Festival in 2022, back in January. Um, Nanny has the special distinction of winning the U.S. Grand Jury Prize. Let's go! Yeah, it, um, we were really, really excited about it. And it also centers uh, a mother of color. Um, and what I, one of the things I love, I mean, it's it's, 
the first horror film to win Sundance. And it's only the second film directed by a black woman to win Sundance. And uh, it, you'll see that. And there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of about the immigrant experience and being a mother of color that is just so beautifully done and beautifully told in that movie. And uh, Amazon and Blumhouse uh, acquired us and, I can't remember the exact dates I should know, but we're going to be uh, in theaters in November and then streaming worldwide uh, in December. So Amazing. yeah, those two things coming up and a bunch, a bunch more stuff in the pipeline. I love it. I just, I- I'm amazed by you. I've always been, you're, you're just super talented. You really put yourself in the work and just everything you're all about. Um, I just, how do you juggle it all? I know for myself. I don't. I, the, me. I don't. Right? <laughs> Your parents- I, you know what? You know what I thought? I thought to myself that you were going to ask that question. And I was literally like, I'm going to just have to tell him the truth because that's all there is. <laughs> Outlook. It, uh, every, I am. My phone. Those, that's the other half of my brain. If I didn't have that, I'd be done. It's really, it's really hard. I mean, yeah. um, I could not. I could not do this without my husband. I'm going to shout out to my husband because hey, um, shout out to our, yeah, he, uh, his joke is always, we kill the, we smash the patriarchy in our household because he's the, he's the stay at home dad. And so I love that. He literally, he, um, he's my right hand. I could not be doing all of this, uh, without him. And it's not to say that I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a doting Filipina mom to our son as well, but, um, it's, you know, he said it. It's like I've been burning the candle at all ends since we started the deal in 2017. And so, uh, yeah, yeah you, you had a busy docket. Like I'm ready. Like I'm even ready. with this, you know, it's ready for like one after the other. But it's all about the work. And I, I felt lately personally, uh, and to all those watching this that are creatives, and you know, you know that you're, know that we'll be there. And know that you're for yourself. Okay, we got to just, we have to exercise that self-care. You know, it's just, oh yeah, we're doing the work for ourselves. And if they don't, you're, the people that are behind you for you to go for your dreams will always be behind you. Yeah. Family, I, friends. I, I, um, yeah. Is, I feel like the worst friend sometimes because I'm so busy. Yeah, no, that, I mean, that that's it. And we're like, but I don't, because of where we are with the pandemic too, I feel like people are, un, people are a little bit more understanding. It's like, because we're yeah. all just we're all trying to keep it together and we're all trying to like, you know, keep the work going, keep the art going, keep the art flowing. It's, um, it hasn't been easy though. Truly. It's been, it's been, it's been a lot to juggle, but, um, you know, you, 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 you find there are seasons where you got to push yourself, you know, um, past maybe what, (laughs) maybe what's healthy, but then I'm looking forward to a season of, uh, maybe toning taking back a little and um spending a little bit more time self-care and the thing is with hollywood you just never know when all the movies are going to come yeah you know like because they're all every timeline is different and you don't i would never have guessed that you know we the deal was our first film but uh it's it's coming out at the same time as other films that we started much later so it was it that's it's hollywood for you yeah ah but we love it. We love it. And uh, as long as we all support each other and give each other that space and time, all good things will 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 come to pass. And I, oh, no, you're amazing, my friend. Um, I just love uh, again. I, I was I think when I started, I was saying uh, Linley Productions and your your amazing partner. Let's you know. So just having a, a female centric, female led, and just the voices that you want to do is just grand. I I thank you for that. Um, yeah. has, thank, thank has that always I, been like your aspiration? Cause you've, you've been an actor and now you're getting behind it from a production standpoint, just, yeah. just this journey. I was like, even look, I didn't know you went to, I think we went to Harvard. Like you had, you know, you're supposed to go this other trajectory, which again, so very Filipino, right? We, they want us to go to school, go, and we go those paths, but entertainment is cool as a hobby, but it's not where they want us to do That's for a exactly. living. Right? And you went and did that. You went handled business and hopefully we can have an even a better just dis- you know, you know my traditional show powder show discussion. I love your traditional oh, show powder show. <laughs> so but again, it's all about the deal right now, y'all. Go check it out on Roku. Um, but just this journey uh, uh of doing that and, and doing what you love, I just admire that. So uh, this is just like the next chapter in production and uh, congratulations on the deal and with Wrightsville and the nanny and everything coming our way. Um I just want to kind of close out with that and just 
highlighting what Linlay will come our way and what you want to do with Linlay. Yeah, and no, the name Linlay that. Productions. Yeah, I um, uh, well, Grace Lay is um my my producing partner. Uh, so that's where the Lay comes from. Uh, Lynn is actually has two meanings. Lynn is um, uh, the last name of uh her late husband, but is also the name that my mom would go by. She was Lynn of all trades. She was, she would do, you know, she, she got her degree in one thing, but then she learned how to do another thing and then learned how to do another thing on top of that. And then became a pro at something else. And so she was, um, that's, that's my connection to the Lynn side of it. And, uh, we, our mission is to center, to tell intergenerational stories that center multicultural people in front of and behind the camera. And for me, you know, I love acting is my passion. And I think it will always, always, always be. Uh, but at some point you hit a, hit a moment in this, in, in Hollywood where it's like, you want to be, you want to have a seat at the table at, at, and, and be able to have an influence on which stories get told. And that's the thing, like as an actor, I, I, I come to the, I come in later in the process. And so I really wanted to, I really wanted to learn about producing because I wanted to have an effect on which stories get told. And I'm I'm really grateful to um, Grace and getting to partner with her and being able to do a lot of the work that we're doing. I'm so excited about what, what we have coming down the, the pipeline. Like we, um, yeah, we had a couple more, uh, we have a couple more great films. I want to be able to talk about them all, but in that means you just have to come back, Somali. That, oh, I would love to. Back. I would love to. Yes, 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 please. I love that. Oh, man. So, uh, yeah. Uh, what, what was I going to say? I had something I was going to say that um, I got to pull back a second. Okay, I'm here. The I was just touched by, uh, is that your your mother's name at the very end that you also kind of dedicate along with, uh, I guess, your partner? Um, yeah, uh, Linda. Know, Linda Montano. Yeah, yeah, Linda Montano is my mom's name. And um, I felt that it kind of touched me. I was like, oh, there's this film about mothers and like they had to pay respects. I, mm, it hit me. It hit me. Yeah. Yeah. I think for, you know, I think for both of us, uh, for Grace and I, this film being our first film together, um, it was it was a really special journey that we both got to got to go on. And then to be to have our ship helmed by Dean Devlin and Electric Entertainment was uh, as pretty special, you know. You, not, I, I feel like not every, you, you know, like for my first film, I feel like, oh my god, I can't believe that! I can't believe it looks like this. What? Yes, <laughs> you deserve it. That's amazing. Um, I'm, I'm so thankful for you. So thankful for Linlay Productions. Um, that your journey into that it kind of mirrored my own in a way. I like started off as an actor, but again in order for us to have our stories told because they weren't coming my way. So I'm like, man, I would get everything but Filipino. So I was like, you know what? I know how to make films. I'm going to get behind the screen and I'll just, yeah, uh, I'm going to sacrifice and do what I have to do. Cause it is a sacrifice as well. It takes, when you go the other route, then you have to sacrifice the time and energy of auditioning for those roles to totally. that. And totally. so thank you for that. Cause it's going to create opportunities and, and inspire others did you, uh, you kind of come to it on your own and we're like oh wait i gotta do because i think i had it percolating in the back of my mind but it actually took a friend to be like why don't you do this you know why don't you why don't you do it yourself and i was like oh wait somebody kind of like encouraged me and gave me permission to tell my tell my story and uh did you come to it on your own it was always percolating as well yeah. um as something i wanted to do eventually yeah exactly. i knew i would have exactly. the tools and, and the ability to, um, but then strangely enough, because I was prior military, um, I had an opportunity to do some industrial work for the military because oh, wow. they found out I was an actor and also an actor with a security clearance uh, for this particular production company that gave me the space. And uh, so I started, you know, getting behind the camera with them, some industrial work at first. And then that led to other projects and so on and so forth. But, That's how I got uh, my SAG card from an industrial. <laughs> I love that <laughs> one line on an industrial film. <laughs> Amazing. So uh, thank you, Somali. This is truly a pleasure. Everybody check out the deal over on Roku. Uh, again, keep tabs with Linlay Productions. And for those that are, you know, uh, 
checking this out. I'll have everything in the description below. But if you're driving, because I know a lot of people like to listen to my stuff on their commute, because I do live in the DC area where it takes a while to get into work. So they're they're driving in. Uh, if you could tell them how they could uh, check you out online, Somali, and uh, uh, remember that and put it in the, their headspace so that they can uh, follow you, know, you and yeah. see everything. I'm pretty accessible online. Um, Twitter and Instagram are where I live mostly right now, Somali.com. So it's it's S U M A L E E E. Oh, I misspelled my own name. Uh, dot com, D O T C O M. There you go, y'all. Check out Somali. She's amazing. And then uh, when time permits with her busy schedule, uh, we will have her back to talk about all the things Lindley Productions and hopefully also what I do on Show Pal Show and, and break it down and just see how she came to be and be as amazing as she is uh, so we can inspire everybody else that wants to be uh, Sumali Montanos as well, like myself. I need I to be love, like you. I would love to come back and talk with you more, Kuyapi. Thank you. Salamat. I appreciate Salamat. you. All right, y'all. That's Sumali Montano. I am Kuya P. You can follow me at the legend Kuya P and as well as at Show Pal Show. We love y'all. Mahal kita. Salamat.